So um, there's different kinds of mixtures. We've been focusing on solutions, and a solution is homogeneous and translucent, which means that if I have uh, pure water, it looks like it's clear, and it look, you can tell that there's nothing in the water. It's completely translucent. However, if you add some salt to the water and stir it up, it doesn't really look any different. It's still translucent after the salt has dissolved, or sugar. As long as it's a colorless solute, we really can't tell the difference when it's pure water or if it's a solution because the particles are so small and they're so spread out that it just looks translucent. It looks like pure water. There's other kinds of mixtures though that we would not consider solutions. There is a suspension and a colloid. So suspensions are heterogeneous, which means that if you take certain, uh, if you take a sample from certain parts of the milk jug, you'll get a different composition of compounds. So the top of the milk jug probably has more fat than the bottom of the milk jug uh, because fat is less solute is less dense and it floats to the top. So suspensions separate on standing. Colloids are heterogeneous and they do not separate on standing. Um, but in both cases they're opaque. So if we can see through um, a liquid, then that liquid we would say that the solute is dissolved. Even if it has a color, even if it's yellow but we can see through it, it's a solution. If it's blue but we can see through it, it's a solution. If it's blue and cloudy, then it must be a suspension or a colloid. So if we can't see through the solution, then that generally is uh, an indication that it's not a solution. So suspensions and colloids show the Tyndall effect and Brownian motion. So Brownian motion is the, uh, the random motion of particles. So particles move, they have jitters, they kind of move one direction or another direction, and this motion is random. You know, a particle that goes here, and it's just kind of tracing the path of where the particle might go. It has these round, random motions, Brownian motion, that's caused by excess kinetic energy. So if a solution is warm, the particles have energy to move, and they move in this fashion. They kind of move in this random kind of dance that's called Brownian motion. And the Tyndall effect is um, another way that we can talk about this uh, cloudiness of solutions. So a solution is not cloudy. It can, we can see right through it. You, um, whether it's red or clear or blue or green, um, if we pass a light through it, the light goes right through it. Th that is an indication that everything is dissolved. But in a colloid, if I pass that same light, you can see the laser here. We can't see it passing through the air. We can't see it passing through the solution. Those are both homogeneous. But here it hits the colloid, and suddenly the, we can see the laser, and it starts spreading out. That's because the, the laser is actually bouncing off. I thought I had another picture here. The laser is actually bouncing off the small particles that are inside the solution that are not dissolved. Here, those particles are so small that the light uh, can can't interfere with them. The wavelength of the light is smaller than the particle itself, or excuse me, the particle itself is smaller than the wavelength of light. But in this case, in a colloid or in a suspension, that's not true. And so if we flash a light through something and it kind of gets cloudy like this, that's called the Tyndall effect. And that is an indication that, it is, that the solute is not completely dissolved. The suspension is one that does not separate on standing. So this is like milk. If you leave um, a cup of milk out for a really long time, it's not going to separate. But if you leave a cup of muddy water out for a while, eventually all the mud will sink to the bottom and the water will have clear water on top. So if all of the particles eventually settle to the bottom, then that would be, uh, we would call that a colloid. So milk is a good example of, of a suspension because it doesn't separate on standing. A colloid, on the other hand, does separate on standing. So a colloidal mixture, um, one which this kind of looks like a cup of milk, but this is actually flour mixed in with milk, or flour and water, I mean. So flour and water, if we had this mixture, after enough time, all the flour would sink to the bottom of the cup, and we would have water on top. So right now, it kind of looks like a mixture, heterogeneous, but give it enough time and it would separate. So here's some examples of uh, different colloids. So just like solutions, we can have the phases be solid and gas, or liquid and gas, or gas and gas. So we can have different kinds of uh, solvents and, and solutes. Uh, when we're talking about colloids too. Smoke, dust, um, starch and water, some colored gems are examples of colloidal systems. Cl 
cloud. A cloud is a colloid because you can't see through it, so the water is not dissolved in the air. Um, so uh, the general idea is if you can't see through something, then it's not a solution. It's either a colloidal dispersion or it's a suspension.